Hello, and uh, welcome back to the second episode of Rise of Awakening with your host, uh, Devin, and my co-host, Shannon. Say hello, Shannon. Hi, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, let's see. Uh, we p- pulled up some information. We're going to talk about uh, hydraulic fracturing, or fracking as it's known. Uh, I guess that would be the anti-political term, or the politically incorrect, whatever. Anyway, uh, I did a video about this a while back on my YouTube channel, and uh, the process uh, of fracking, uh, as you all know, uh, is injecting fluid in the ground at high pressure to release natural gas. It sounds friendly, right? Um, the, the whole process seems friendly, but when you start looking into the details of it all and what it takes... Uh, for example, the 1.8 million gallons of water to complete each job, uh, and all that water is mixed with the chemicals, um, 40,000 gallons of chemicals to be exact. Um, most of the chemicals they, they do not uh, want to make known public because it's their trade secret. They want to hide some of this information for the obvious reason, big profits but out of those 40,000 uh, gallons of chemicals, uh, just to name a few, uh, lead is one of those, uranium, mercury, which is not good for the human body, ethylene glycol, radium, methanol, and hydrochlor- hydrochloric acid, excuse me. And last but not least, formaldehyde, for God's sakes. <laughs> weird. <laughs> so... Not to mention that uh, as a species or any animal on this planet, uh, we all need water to uh, sustain our life. And just the amount of water that is going into these jobs is is pretty critical to me. Uh, That's water that won't ever be able to be uh, drinkable again. Uh, The chemicals that are recovered, uh, 30 to 50 percent of those, stay in the soil and they are non-biodegradable so if that doesn't ring an alarm for health and things you should be paying attention to i don't know what will uh there's a gentleman we ran across a couple of days ago from wyoming did a speech in australia uh, to these people and he explained well you know these people wanted to come in these companies wanted to come in and drill on his property and he 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 had he submitted before knowing the details and uh, the fumes from the site were, were just horrible, uh, burning sensations in the eyes, nose, and throat. And, uh, and of course, the tap water was murky and at some point uh, became flammable. So can we keep going like this? And that, that's, that's my question to Shannon. Uh, I don't think I want to be faced in the future with having contaminated water. Do you? Not at all. I believe that no one would want to go through something like that. And how you would filter that correctly to get rid of those toxins is beyond me. I just think fracking in general is goes against nature altogether. Oh, it what? does. It, it totally goes against nature. It, it, it uh, disrupts and threatens wild lands. Uh, fracking ne- negatively impacts wild lands uh, treasured by all Americans. Um, lands managed by the Bureau of Land Management, BLM, in the Rocky Mountain West, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico contain some of the most spectacular American landscapes in the country, for sure. And uh, I'm, I'm reading from uh, the Wilderness Society website, and within this website, there's a map, and it shows the red areas of uh, fracking practices across the whole United States. And <clears throat> it's uh, it's growing, and it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Um, I will post this, this link in the chat room for all interested to take a peek at, um, just to see if you're in the safe zone or not. Um, so to go on with... Uh, with the process, uh, let's do some math. Uh, currently, 500,000 active wells are uh, in the U.S. That's equaling 8 million gallons of water per fracking site. 
and a, a fracking well can be fracked 18 times, which is 72 trillion gallons of water and 360 billion gallons of chemicals. So during the process, methane gas and, uh, and toxic chemicals contaminate groundwater. And uh, as of late, uh, 1,000 documented cases uh, of water contamination have been uh, around, uh, most of them occurring in places like Pennsylvania, Wyoming, and Arkansas, Oklahoma, and the list is growing. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? This, this is really keeping in mind that our children and the, the next generation. You know, uh, can we tell them that the, the water is not going to be suitable to drink in the future? Is that a fair thing to do to our children? Or do we end it? I wish there was a way. Or how to end it would be more the, the question. Well, there's ways to end it. We just need to get people on board, get them on the bandwagon, and, and start demanding, demanding to our senators and our local governments, stop this now. Don't think about the profits. Don't think about the big money. Think about the long run of health and health risks. This is not something we can continue to do. We have alternative sources of energy sources, excuse me, um, like I spoke of in our last show, uh, solar power. Solar power is abundant. It's <laughs> on any given day in most parts of the world. You have quite a bit of sunlight, so we should harness this. You know, uh, wind energy and even water turbine energy. We could be completely off the grid and not have to worry about the side effects and the health effects that we're passing along to the next generation. It's just not fair. My other concern is with all this fracking, wouldn't this also be causing some issues with earthquakes, especially down in Oklahoma? Yes, indeed. It has spurred earthquake activity, and a lot of people are aware of it. And, of course, the big companies that are doing the fracking claim, well, no, no, that's that's just, just a naturally, naturally occurring thing in the states there's going to be earthquake activity everywhere well i'm sorry oklahoma does not sit on any type of a fault line to my knowledge so no i i don't agree that that is a, a valid argument on on behalf of, of these companies that are uh, fracking in the parts of the country that they are in fact uh, oklahoma itself since 2009 looks like uh, Swiss cheese, it's riddled with, with earth, earthquake activity since fracking started. And bear in mind, too, this is not a process that's new. This has been going on for quite a long time, and it's just becoming uh, relevant as far as a uh, subject to be paying attention uh, excuse me, be paying attention to really, really hard. Um, I just I can't see us existing as a species or a, a human life. Or, or, any or, or any life. Um, back back to that article. Uh, you know, humans may be totally conscious that uh, the water is not drinkable, but the animals will. You know that the animals have to have water. You know that they, they might think it's going to smell funny or whatever, but it's 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 a product of life that needs to be there for them. So what's going to happen to the animals? Um, this should concern everyone who eats meat, whether they hunt or purchase it indirectly from the farm or near a fracking well. It's just, it's, it's going to affect everything. Everything, people. And despite the recorded health risks, the facts are hard to find. That's what they claim. There's too many loopholes in federal laws designed to protect you know, drinking water. And uh, a lot of disclosure requirements for fracking chemicals vary widely by state. So we need to all get on the same page as far as uh, the state's level of concern. Uh, we all have to come together as a people because the, these companies just need to completely stop doing what they're doing. Something that... Uh 
this guy out of here out of Wyoming. I can't remember exactly what city it was in in Wyoming. John Benton. Uh, John John Benton. Australia to uh, I think it was Melbourne. He did a speech over there. You can find John on Facebook if you have a Facebook account. Uh, he uh, is a pretty cool dude. He's he's starting a movement and he's trying to get people to open their eyes to to the dangers of, of the uh, hydraulic fracturing. One of the things I noticed when we watched the video about it um, went from this lovely piece of land that he had his house that was being built on and then all of a sudden of course the, the drilling with the fracking which was supposed to be over 350 miles away from uh, a home or structure well oh, I think it was like 150 feet or something it was more than 350 but unfortunately the thing was almost right at the back door of this guy's house that was being built and they couldn't even drink anything. I mean, they were just getting sick, um, having problems with breathing. Um, and then it went from this nice little stretch of land into complete, almost industrial, and things were dying around it. I thought, that's so horrible. Well, his, his uh, I believe it was his uh, mother-in-law had uh, lost her tense sense of uh, taste, oh, yeah. her sense of smell. And... I believe his daughter was starting to show signs of this as well. So, yeah, this is not something to be taken lightly, folks. We, we need to start contacting our local governments and our, our senators and just put our foot down and say, this is it, this is enough. You know, present them with the facts. Show them the documented cases. Find the information. Knock on their door. Send them emails. That this is time to stop this. We have to find different forms of energy. We have to. This is not the way to do it. Not the way to do it, in my opinion. When I look at, you know, when they're fracking into the earth, it's almost like them fracture or <laughs> I can never say that. Fracturing the shell into the bloodstream of the earth, like a living body. And it's like poisoning the earth along with poisoning everything above it animals, people, so forth. Um, that's, to me, very disheartening in general because not just people, it's Earth itself. Yes, yes, it is. It's, it's no different than drilling for oil. Um, we all know that there's been plenty of episodes of, of oil spills around the country and into the ocean. Looking back on the on the Gulf and BP, which has uh, to this date still hasn't completely cleaned up the mess, and they they're still liable for for uh, the health problems that people are still experiencing. And money is not going to solve these issues. You know, BP can hand out you know two to three million dollars or billions of dollars to these people that are suffering, but it's not going to fix their health. It's not going to fix the environment. It's not going to fix the waterways, and it's it's just not going to fix life. So uh, if, if we get a hold on, on the problems at hand as they are right now, now, maybe we can salvage what we have done and, and let Mother Nature return to what it needs to be. Uh, this planet is, is one day just going <laughs> to get really, really upset and Mother Nature will fight back at some point and hopefully before it's too late. In our state, in Wyoming, I'm sure you've all heard of Yellowstone, that big, big, big uh, volcano that's, I, <laughs> I can't help but to think they're sitting there um, fracking these areas. That's just going to cause that big monster to finally just blow its top. <laughs> oh gosh, I hope not. Uh, no, because uh, that's one of the largest volcanoes in the world. Uh, not sure if it's the largest in the world. It's one of the largest dormant volcanoes. I do know that. We just live uh, southeast of that monster. I oh. hope it doesn't blow anytime soon, or we're really going to be <laughs> screwed. <laughs> it's really hard to do a radio show if that ash coming down on. <laughs> oh no, no! I'm teasing. No, but anyway, I'm just. 
it, it, it just amazes me that like the um, fracking home around the is it called Meridian? Oh yeah, so there is there is the new Meridian fault line, but it doesn't go through Oklahoma. It's actually more from, from uh, about the Great Lakes region on down through uh, Arkansas, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, that area of the country. Uh, Oklahoma sits just west of that. So that's just proof that, yes, it's, it is the fracking that's creating the earthquakes in that area. And my sister lives in that area, and I, I've, I've asked her about this. She's, she's one of those that's kind of not really a, a totally awake to what's going on in the world. She's not necessarily that deep into the illusion that she might not be interested in looking into this. I mean, if I lived there, I, I sure would be, you know. I mean, here in Wyoming, um, we do have a number of, of fracking wells also, but not to the degree of, of uh, those parts of the country like Oklahoma, Arkansas, Pennsylvania. Um, it, they spread like wildfire. Once once they get their chance to dig into the earth with one well, then there's another one cropping up, and another one, and another one. And then pretty soon it's just the whole landscape is just spotted with these, these fracking wells. And well, it's, you it's, what it does around the area of where these fracking wells are at. Just turns it into dust land. Oh yeah, it'll be a, it, it will it will be a wasteland. So you know, and you you can say, oh well, we can just drink bottled water for the rest of our life. Well, no, we're gonna we're gonna run out of adequate water. Um, in the end, it's it's just it's it's there's no answer and except for standing up and putting an end to it. That's that's where I stand, and that's what I'm gonna start doing uh, myself. So. Let's see, what do we got in that chat room here? Uh, of course, we have Paula in there, and she says, awesome. Thank you, Paula, for that. Um, well, I guess we can uh, move on to another subject. Uh, that's that's just some details and things that we put together. And, uh, well, let's see. Uh, I switch topics rapidly because I cover a lot of different different information. I don't know if anybody out there has been covering this uh, mystery of the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. <laughs> but um, you can almost bet that this is a cover-up story to something bigger going on behind the scenes. Uh, just before this, this uh, story came out, we were paying attention to Ukraine and the protests, and then Russia decided to make its presence known. So, yeah, this whole Malaysia flight thing, um, uh, I read CNN yesterday. Uh, they claim that the U.S. intelligence officials were leaning towards the theory of the pilots were deliberately responsible for the mis mysterious disappearance of the jet airliner. Now, like I said in a video I made about this as well, um, theory, okay, that's just a theory. But... You know, and, and it's been on CNN as a lead story or a top story for at least the last five days. And there's little side notes about Ukraine and Russia. And just, just today or yesterday, Obama is, is uh, placing sanctions on Russia. You know, we could be heading for that World War III very, very soon. And I don't know what you all think about that. but I already think it's here, but... <laughs> Just haven't seen this. Well, that is kind of World War Three is actually kind of happening uh, under our nose, and we don't really even know it. the United States and has invaded and occupies so many countries as it is right now. We have military bases everywhere, you know. And that's you know some would say, well, that's all part of the new world order. Well, yes, indeed, uh, it already has begun, and. Is this the end? I don't know. I think this is an awakening to the new world. Because there's many more of us against them. And I have to have some hope that we're going to overcome this. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to overcome this. I sure hope you're right, Shannon. Like I've told you before, if I was invisible and had a sniper rifle, I could probably solve some of these situations overnight. But I don't have those superpowers. 
And uh, in the chat room, Paula just mentioned that her uh, youngest would be 12 next month and uh, never lived a day when we weren't at war. And this is true. And, you know, the, the whole, let's look back, you know, when it used to be baseball and American pie was, was the whole American theme. Now it's just, you know, support your troops, support your troops. I, I do support my troops in the fact that I feel sorry for them unknowingly engaging in such supposed conflicts for the global elite and the oligarch structure as it is. And I support them in that, but I, I, I don't support the wars. I, I just don't support the wars. It's, it's They're meaningless. They make no sense. Uh, Post-9-11, you know, was, was different. Uh, but since 9-11, uh, you can obviously see the big changes that have taken place all in the name of war. And I, I think that if people paid attention to that, they would understand and, and be a little bit more conscious to the fact that we don't need to be doing these wars anymore. It's just, there's no purpose to it. It's just death. One of the things that's very, um, on a personal level myself, um, my 18-year-old son's going to be going in the Air Force. He understands our, our take of this, but it's to the point where, you know, unless you can fork out a lot of money for college, which doesn't necessarily guarantee that job um, or work several part-time and never get anywhere, it's almost like a lean these younger kids into getting into the military to... What's the word I want to say? Entice them. We'll pay you money. We'll do this, this, and this. Oh, yes. Um, the, the dangling carrot is dangling what that's carrot. called. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more on that after the break. I think we should take a little five-minute break for all you people that need to run to the potty, including myself. <laughs> so let's get into that break now, and we'll be back in about five minutes. All righty, we're back. Sorry about the little audio mess up there. We were talking about uh, war and uh, the young people joining the war because they have the dangling carrot in front of their face, the money, the college education that awaits them when they return from their calls, uh, calls of duty or being stationed in other countries. And uh, Shannon mentioned that her son, Tyler, my, my stepson, is going to be joining the military soon. And um, I'm not totally opposed to military and the fact that it does kind of make a man out of you uh, or a woman. Uh, it teaches you some good core values. Uh, that's that's the positive side to this. But uh, understand that uh, as a country, we spend more money on military than anything else. And that's, that's the broader point here is uh, here in America, we have people living on the streets. We have people that are one paycheck away from being homeless. We have people that don't eat right or don't eat healthy because they can't afford to. Um, we are the ones that support the government through tax money that we don't voluntarily give up. It's basically stolen from our pockets via the IRS things of that nature, and uh, there is no tax law, and most of us know this. The whole thing is finding that loophole to make yourself tax exempt and stop funding the war machine. I suppose in the future that may become a reality. Who knows? Uh, until then, uh, if there's any young people out there listening that are considering joining the military, think twice. And think long and hard. Um, there's other ways to make a living in this country. Not many of them, but there's other ways and better ways to make a living instead of taking a bribe from the government to go kill innocent women and children across the globe. Well, it seems the more that um, jobs are taken, um, it's getting to the point where finding a full-time job is impossible. You can get part-time jobs, but... It, it doesn't make any sense. You, they're, they're almost like they're shoving these younger kids into, well, you can either do this. We're not going to guarantee that you're out once you're out of college. If you're going to get that job. Um, or you can do this way and work for the government. And we'll take care of you. 
which goes back to uh, people not able to make a living or sustain a, a, an actual living, put food on the table. So then they go and try to get assistance for, through the government so that everybody is all of a sudden dependent upon the government. Well, yes, and that's what they want. That's exactly what they want. They want to create a situation where ultimately we are dependent on the government, and it's getting more and more so. So ask yourself these questions. The people up there on Capitol Hill in the White House, they're just people, folks. They put their pants on one leg at a time. They eat like we do. They do everything like we do, but somewhere along the way in the last hundred years or so, they have understood that through power and money, they can control us. And they're doing a mighty fine job of it, unfortunately. And it's only because we let it happen. After the 60s, 70s, and 80s is when things really started to ramp up against the American people. Our rights are be take, being taken away every day, under our noses, behind closed doors. There's being many, many bills being signed into law without congressional approval. The, the whole system of government does not work the way it was designed to work. And it, our forefathers are not actually any more innocent than today's society of government, to be honest. Um, they did have a structured plan, but it, it just it got too big. The government is just too big. So you can figure pretty much from 1871, this is when everything ramped up and went to crap. So. I don't know what 1871 is. Oh, I'll get into that in, a, in a, another show. But uh, Yeah, we've all been taken for fools uh, as far as the IRS is concerned. Uh, I don't know how many of you in the audience are familiar with the boiling frog theory or syndrome. It's, you know, passing taxes was, was not an easy thing to do until they you know, just turned up the heat slowly. The story goes, if you put a frog into hot boiling water right off the get-go, he's going to stop. So what they did is they just turned up the heat slowly until we one day realized, hey, we're cooked. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's just it's hard to wrap your head around uh, these these changes happening in America. All of the uh, police brutality and the, just everything is against the people. You know, everything just seems to be against the people, and it's just it saddens me that there, there's not enough people out there to realize what's going on. I think there's a growing number coming around finally, but it needs to, to be a little bit quicker because time is very, very short, folks. We are living in a world of very strange times. It's, it's, it's like a sci-fi movie coming true, you know? It's more like Twilight Zone. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like the Twilight Zone. I, I don't know. I, I think... I think a lot about New York City since 9-11. They've, uh, they have more cameras and CCTV uh, equipment throughout the whole city that there is no privacy anymore. You're, you're a human experiment under the microscope, you know. And their only excuse is it's anti-terrorism, homeland security. Oh, gosh, I can't cuss on here, so I won't. Um yeah, it, it angers me, and I just, I guess, if you live in uh, in the Midwest or the West, you're, you're probably not experiencing some of these realities, fortunately. Uh, it seems like all the, the anti-terror drills and, and whatnot are, are happening in your bigger cities, like Chicago. I think there was one in Florida. Um so what are they doing? Are they are they trying to condition us for, for what's coming? Uh, do they want us to be used to uh, seeing troops in the streets? Do they want to... Drones in the sky. Yeah, drones in the sky. Uh, it's like 1984, folks. It truly is. And how do we how do we take this country back? Those are the questions. 
everybody has the questions. It's, it's the hard part is uh, finding those answers. Finding solutions to it. You can come up with many solutions or ideas, but it takes all of us to back each other and go forth and make those things happen. Oh, yeah. And we outnumber them, and they know it. <laughs> it's like the, what was that movie? A Bug's Life. Uh, ants. Ants, yes, yes. Where the grasshoppers finally realized that the ants outnumbered them and their, their power play was over because they knew that they could be taken out of power. And uh, very, very strong message in, in that little segment of that movie. Um, hopefully when the kids watch that, they paid attention. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at in America right now. And well, not just America, the world, it's going on everywhere. And we need to look at places like Egypt and, uh, the Ukraine as examples. Uh, these are honest examples of what could happen here in America very, very soon if we don't restructure ourselves as, as a society in, in uh, start governing for the people again because eventually people will stand up i don't want a bloody revolution in this country i don't want my lost lives fighting for freedom in america on american soil i read truly don't that is the last thing i want it would be absolute bloodshed because they're the ones with the big guns they have all the best weapons they have microwaves uh, crowd control devices they have They've got all the big guns, and if we tried to stage a revolution in this country right now today, we would ultimately lose. So what we need to do, in my opinion, is just keep... Uh, our, our silent revolution. Yeah, keep the silent revolution going. Uh, educate people. Educate your friends. Have them educate people. And, of course, you can't force information upon people. They have to be willing to, to uh, listen to what you have to say and take a stance on it and spread the truth because the truth is the answer the, the more people that are become awake that is a big step for mankind to make the right changes and as far as the government goes if, if they start to see that we are awake to their game maybe that will make a difference maybe they will finally realize hey we need to get back to government for the people well, I think exposing them more and more and more, which is starting to happen. Um, and doing that and getting, gathering that information and that and exposing these people, I think will be another really good thing that will help. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they, they know, uh, they, they know through the NSA program that a lot of people are fed up. They know it. They're not spying on us because we're terrorists. They're spying on us because they want to watch our reactions to the situations that they are formulating and using against us. And they 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 know full well that that uh, America is waking up to the to the game. And what the actual outcome of this will be, who knows? Hopefully, it goes in our favor, as it should. And. Uh, you know, don't forget to put those positive vibes out into the universe, folks. I'm not uh, completely metaphysical. I'm a little more metaphysical. <laughs> <laughs> but throw those vibes out there. You know, the, the, what you throw out comes back to you. And if you keep throwing out negativity into the world, then it's, things are never going to change. So keep those in mind. You know, keep those positive thoughts. Try to live your life. And don't get too engulfed in, in the mess of this reality of, of politics. I, research and yes, I, I definitely spend uh, quite a bit of time <laughs> delving in it and uh, along with this radio show that has just begun. Yay, I love it. I, I thank everyone who's gotten me started here. Thank you, Paula, and all of the other people that are behind the scenes making this happen. Uh, yes, thank, you. thank you very much. And uh, Hopefully we can return this or continue this. I, I have full, full uh, intention of doing so. And I don't ever want to come on here and bore anybody with, with what I talk about. I just I hope that uh, anything that was said today uh, 
strikes a chord with, with, with you and will uh, get you to uh, start doing some research. Oh, that's uh, all. That's what it takes. It's yeah. a step. Yeah, it's a step. And anyone that tells you that the truth can't be found on the Internet watches too much television. <laughs> um, yes, there are some news sources on the Internet that are not plausible or Take the Onion, for example. Don't ever believe anything you read <laughs> from that site. It's just a joke, and it was meant to be. But uh, there are credible news sources out there, and if you find one topic that, that kind of strikes a chord with you, uh, look up look up several uh, other sites or web pages on the same topic, and you, after a while, you will start to see that hey, there is some truth out there. This isn't just hogwash being typed. So. Uh, social media is our best tool right now. Uh, I'm talking Facebook, even though it's a CIA-controlled uh, entity at the moment. Uh, use it against them. Do you like I do? Throw a lot of anti-government posts on there, you know? Uh, I'm not scared. <clears throat> You've got to get to the point where you let go of the fear, and then you can control your journey. Don't be afraid. If someone knocks at your door, answer it and tell them to go away. Uh, it may not be that I'm easy. I'm not buying your your. Uh, what is it? <laughs> I'm not buying your story. Become this. I'm sorry. I, I do not uh, consider myself one to follow these stupid rules. Um, I'm a person of the planet, and that's my take. That's my stance, and I will continue to have that opinion. Um, we are ungovernable. All of us. Yeah, we should all be ungovernable, you know, to a degree. Uh, I, I, I would venture to say that we need a small amount of government for, for various reasons, but it's just gotten too big, folks. Too big. There's too big for their britches, as I say. And money and power is their answer. Meanwhile, here we are suffering the consequences of that. No, I think I should just throw it back in their face. No, not doing it anymore. That's what we need to do. Because <laughs> in the end, we can't eat money, and neither can they. So, so in SA, if you've been listening to this radio broadcast, I hope you learned something today, and maybe you should reconsider your job position. <laughs> do you feel good about yourself? Do you sleep good at night? I surely hope so. So we got about, oh, maybe about another five minutes left in the show here, Shannon. Will you have anything to close up? Uh, it, it might be leaving more on a topic on this to further investigate. Um, my biggest thing recently has been about the whole Obamacare, Affordable <clears throat> Care Act. And yes. I, yeah, I really think it's ridiculous. Indeed. And I'm sure not going to sign up for it. First of all, it's not affordable. Not to mention the restrictions you have with who you get your insurance through. Uh, like I said, I have to do a little more investigation on this, but I can tell you right now between it not working to even sign up for it, um, it's the closest thing to what Hitler did, the T4 program to me. Absolutely. I mean, mandate a law saying you have to do this or you'll be fined. Well, if it's so great, how come they don't want to sign up for it? Which brings me to they cannot pass laws that do not apply to them. And, uh, yeah, so that's in a nutshell not the right thing to be doing. And, uh, you know, early on Obama said that uh, you could get health care for about the price of your monthly cell phone bill. And then the Shortly thereafter, he says, well, in order to afford the health care, you're going to have to make household expenses, like trimming down your cell phone bill. Yeah, Mr. Contradictory. Yes, he never follows the rules. He makes promises and never keeps them, but he's just the puppet on the string. And the oligarchy stands behind him, and they are the ones that make all the rules that he follows via his wonderful teleprompter. Yeah, what a person of power that can't even speak for himself, huh? Okay, well, 
I think I have ran out of topic information for the most part, and we have to end this show slightly early today because there's uh, some hosting that's going on to another show coming up, and we want to give them time to do that. So thank you all for joining us on our, our second uh, episode of Rise of Awakening, and hope to have you all back next week. Same time, same place.